Today I want to talk about something that often goes unseen, and that's photographic underlays for sketches. Oftentimes, young designers can think using photographs as an underlay for a concept can be seen as cheating, but really when you get down to it, what tool isn't a cheat in some way? I'm sure uh, when magic markers were first invented, people who were just using pastels thought that that was a cheat. And when Canson paper was invented, people who didn't have tone paper thought that that was a cheat. Uh, my advice and my philosophy is to use every tool you can at your disposal. Uh, so sometimes I'll take a photograph of a product I already have or a product I worked on, you know, just something that's sitting around and I'll, I'll photograph it in a compelling perspective so that I can sketch over it. Sometimes I'll get a CAD model or rough out a CAD model and get that as an underlay just kind of the way I want it. Or sometimes I'll find a photo on the internet. By chance this week, I found this old sketch that I did back in 2017 from my book, 365. Ironically, this sketch never made it into the book, and I even did a time-lapse video of the entire process. I'm looking for a dynamic perspective of a semi-rig, and I found this great CAD render by British designer Adam Palethorpe. And really what I just want is a nice base underlay perspective to overlay my idea on. The concept truck that I'm gonna be sketching up today is an autonomous vehicle. What I want to show is this kind of low down engine and brain kind of compartment to the autonomous vehicle. But on top of that is a bunch of active arrows. So a huge active arrow wing that goes up to the top of the cargo box and two active arrow wings off to the side that kind of direct airflow around. Now that I've got my rough concept worked out, you can see I can get rid of that underlay sketch, blow up my original thumbnail and start making a little bit of a tighter, cleaner sketch over top. As I'm detailing it out, I'm looking for new opportunities to design, maybe thinking about, hey, let's keep this top arrow wing actually translucent so you could see that there's actually no cab on this thing and you're just looking down onto this fairing that covers the motor and the uh, autonomous sensors and, and brain. So as I'm working through, I'm, I'm working out some details. I always like to brand my concepts just to give them a, a little bit of a sense of reality. So let's make this a Mercedes branded vehicle. And now let's really push that contrast so you can get a really strong sense of what's going on. Only now that the concept is really kind of flushed out, I'll start adding some color. So let's tint this active arrow element, a nice blue purplish tint and start coloring in the cargo box. And I'd like to brand this as well. I think let's make this a target truck. Notice how I'm always kind of pushing the contrast as I'm going through and I'm kind of working around the entire sketch at the same time, adding details here and there. Since this is a Mercedes product, let's add those two traditional Mercedes power bulges and get a, a stronger highlight on top of that active arrow piece on the top. So you get a sense it's kind of like a cab and gives you a sense of familiarity, but you also know something different is going on because you could see through that translucent element to just nothing underneath. So what do you guys think? Do you use photographic underlays in your work or is that something you try to stay away from? As always, hit me up in the comments below if you've got any questions on what I did or if you have any suggestions for future videos. And hit like and subscribe if you wanna see future content.